Ladies and gentlemen, friends from the APO member countries and all around the world, greetings from the Asian Productivity Organization Secretariat in Tokyo, Japan. The APO is the leading intergovernmental organization promoting productivity, fostering innovation, and improving competitiveness among its 21 member countries in the Asia Pacific, with our headquarters secretariat based in Tokyo, Japan. So welcome to today's APO Productivity Talk, where we get up close and personal with one of the most influential technopreneurs in the Kingdom of Cambodia, Mr. Tu Riti. Riti is the founder and CEO of Kumpi, which brings positive changes to the youth, children and women in the less privileged communities of Cambodia through digital technologies. With Kumpi laptop, young people, children and women can now have access to MacBook Air like sleek, lightweight, next generation laptops offering a very robust experience with equally powerful open source software. As a multi-purpose enabler, Riti also seeks to empower the next generation of Cambodian youths as the creators and innovators of tomorrow. Training courses are offered to such youths to equip them with the software and computer programming skills so that they not only survive but thrive in the digital economy. So before we go further, here is a short video on the powerful features of Kumpi, Intel Celeron processor, 8 gig RAM, 128 gig SSD with eight hours of battery life and weighing only 1.3 kilograms and all for the price of $369 US dollars. So one third the price of the cheapest MacBook Air in the market today. So let's take a look at the video and let's understand some of the features of Kumpi laptops. As we can see from the Kumpi laptop, it is not only powerful in terms of the hardware, but also in terms of the software. There is open source, open suite, free internet browsers, media players, and programming environment for the likes of Python, Go, Bash, and also the future of object-oriented uh, functional programming language called Clojure. So, Turiti has launched Cambodia's first locally designed and marketed laptop. He has this dream of revolutionizing education in Cambodia with a plan to bring Kumpi computers to every high school in Cambodia and structured learning programs to more than 1.73 million students. So he initially targets that students that have never touched a computer will be able to do computer programming and feel confident in this digital economy. So in this digital age, how do we build an inclusive digital workforce? We will find out more from Riti. So Riti, my friend, now the floor is yours for you to share some of the strategies on how to build an inclusive and digitally capable workforce, starting from Cambodia and then beyond all around the world. The floor is yours, Riti. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Josh. Uh, wow, I would like you to work at Gumpi. <laughs> 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 You're welcome. Yeah, because you know a lot about Kumbi than most of the people that work at Kumbi. Um, yeah, so anyway, um, without further ado, let's go to the topic. Um, again, thank you very much for having me at the APO Productivity Talk. Um, let okay, me go to, honor. Yeah, let me go to the slide. Um, go to my slide. So um, the topic today is about building an inclusive uh, and digital capable workforce. This is obviously the very, very, very uh, large, big topic. Uh, we do not hope to cover everything. This is just part of the uh, working together process and Kumpi very luckily be part of this uh, building process. So <clears throat> um, I'd like to start with a quote. If, if we want to build a future, we can always learn from the past, but we cannot always live in the, in the past 
who are trying to build a future. And this is where uh, where Kumpi and the work that we do here uh, is, is based on. Um, the topic that we we'll cover today, I'll, I'll share a little bit about myself and why we do uh, why we do the, 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 the work that we do today at Kumpi and a little bit of uh, uh, detail about Kumpi and the process of how we can participate in building the digital workforce for the uh, uh, new generations and some of the future project or one of the future project that uh, or, or I work as my side project and then leave that for the Q&A after. Um, so currently I work for these three company. I start uh, them all with friends and uh, a partner from Small World initially. Um, Small World started in 2011 uh, aim to work with a lot of young people. And while we work with young people, we, we know that they need tools. Um, and I always in love with the uh, computer, internet, and things around it. So I um, have been working with, with Langnex for a long time. Then uh, this is how we started Kumpi. And uh, in the process of doing the tool company, I always take the time to go to the mountains, enjoy uh, times off from the city, and then have an idea about ha having Small World and Kumpi and other people's office, other startup office in the jungle and, and, and work with the, the jungle, work together in the jungle and, and, and absorb the nature. <coughs> uh, and this is what, uh, how Vitamin Air come about. Vitamin Air aim to uh, be the pilot to reforestation 100 hectare at a time. We say 100 hectare is because we, we bought 100 hectare about three years ago and want to um, use the technology we work at, at Kumpi and uh, gather people that we, we gather at Small World to try to pilot the reforestation there. Um, so I started off um, from a countryside where um, about 17 years of my life was spent on, on islands. And the only time that I get out on island is when I go to a, a high school and a secondary school and high school. And uh, about after high school, I asked my parents to come to learn and pursue my education in Phnom Penh. And uh, coming to Phnom Penh was a very, very big eye opening where I could learn so many things that I did not know before, like textbook. I could only know what textbook provided to me, but I never know what the library uh, was there was some library, but there was no really a library. And the biggest one that I found was internet. It has so much in there that I could learn for a whole life and never, never complete. And that's lead to all the work that we do and uh, at Kumpi and at Small World. And um, <clears throat> with with the eye openings uh, from the internet, it allowed me to to learn uh, and dream a lot bigger. Um, work not just for Cambodia, but work for the whole humanity. This is something that sounds like very big ego, and I hope people don't see that. Uh, it's about um, the world today is not Cambodia as Cambodia border with Thailand, Vietnam, and Laos. Uh, we are border with any country that we can um, talk to through the internet. So um, our dream is to connect Cambodia and the Cambodians and other youth in the world together so that the globalization is more open and transparent. Um, so because today is about uh, building, uh, the today's topic is about building the digital workforce, I'd like to share more about Kumpi because this is more relevant to, to that. Uh, our, our visions is to build tools and provide other resources to the next generation of innovator and um, how we do that is we start with uh, two things one is a, a hardware and a software inside we could always spend money to build hardware in china uh, as long as we have money we can build this kind of hardware but it's it's very hard to have a hardware that work with the software that's uh, customized um, and prepare for the the right uh, group of audience um, Kumpi is working tirelessly, Kumpi team, um, both building software and, and hardware to work together. Um, we do not claim that everything here is built by ourselves. We build on the open source and the open source philosophy, where we also want the young people to, 
to stand on the open source and benefit from it and 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 get used for their own uh, purpose. We do not know what the young people will build, but if they stand on a shoulder of a giant, they would build a lot of good things. Um, if you look at the the market, uh, Kumpi, um, normally when, when people look at Kumpi, they look at, oh, Kumpi is a Cambodia-based company, but we look at ourselves as a global company. Uh, we look at the uh, market from Southeast Asia, uh, South Asia, uh, Africa, and all of this together, we could see that more than 3 billion people uh, are in this, this area alone. And out of those, there are about 1.8 billion people will need to use computer. They obviously can use phones and tablet and all of that. But in order for anyone to be a creator, to create something more effectively, I believe most people will, will agree with me that a uh, computer with full keyboard or a Microsoft Surface style with, with keyboard is still the way to go. Touch screen keyboard is very good and all of that, very mobile, but it still has limitation. Um, example, yesterday there was a nine-year-old kid uh, and their parent came to buy one Kumpi. Uh, they had a tablet, they had iPad, but there's, there's something that limit in there. Obviously, every device has their limitation, um, but when it comes to education, do creativity work, um, without uh, keyboard is still difficult, except if you do drawing on a touch screen. That's still, that's still very good. Um, so when we look at, at the, those big market, we could see about, if we, if we only see 1.5% of the total market uh, addressable, it would be around 27 to 30 million people. And these are people um, that, that will need to use the computer. They are the, at 10 years old, 15 years old today. And, and they will need to use a computer. Um, we say that not that Kumpi will, will want to own this market, but we hope that more people that will build this open source based device would want to build for this, for this market. And, and so uh, that more people can have access to an open source based device and open source uh, software. <clears throat> and we, we stand on this mission firmly that um, we only build a tool uh, for the next generation of engineer. If, if thing that we do here that is not indicate that it's gonna be a tool for the next engineer, we will, um, we will have to redo our, our work or start with something else. Um, but luckily we start with the software uh, based on Linux, uh, this is very flexible. We can do a lot more work on that. Um, we can design mobile, we can design everything else. So uh, we will stick there for a long time. Um, one, one of the things that we, we um, hold uh, behind Kumpi, beside what people see, people only see us as a uh, computer company, like any other company. Um, that build computer, sell computer, make money, um, it's, it passed that. Obviously, as a company, we need to make money, but we, uh, we, need, to, we need to see a higher purpose. And our higher purpose is, is tied to the missions. We want students to have access to computer, and obviously, to be able to learn anything with computer, they have to learn uh, with their own personal computer they hold every day. And so, um, one of our initiatives is to uh, pick up from one laptop per child has done 10 years ago, is that to provide one notebook uh, or notebook computer for every student, at least start from Cambodia. This is an unlikely impossible, a mission impossible, um, but who knows uh, if we can provide a thousand to two thousand to three thousand people uh, student at a time, then maybe three, four years from now, it can be exponentially um, um, grows to the needs uh, of those students. And and maybe at the computer maker will make this kind of computer that access that access by those students too. If more people make this, then our missions is accomplished. As long as students have access to computer and the computer that are allowed to be installed anything they want to install based on the open source, then uh, this is our missions uh, complete. Um, 
one more thing we want to uh, participate in in is the um, one school one lab. We we see that a lot of school has a lab, but most of the lab do not really have a process on how to learn computer besides learning Office Suite like Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel, and all of that. Those are very necessary for uh, now, but uh, 10 years from now, we, we, we might not have the Office application as what we use today. There might be a one suite to do everything as a workspace. Uh, many other big technology company already explore workspace uh, that cover everything in one office, do not need to use an office as we know now. So um, if we teach our students what we do know, then we actually limit them for what they can do in the future. So this lab that we want to be is to just equip a Linux-based uh, software, hardware we don't really care, but if, uh, since we work at Compi, we want to provide a Linux-based, uh, Compi based, line, uh, based on Linux that uh, Compi OS is built. So it's easy to customize for more teacher, more student, um, and then provide them with more ability to learn and self-learn um, so that they can be more independent and, and not really rely on the, to the people. Part of the initiative um, is that even though we have the computer and the lab, if we do not have the internet, uh, free internet, we will not be able to access to those. Uh, those people will not be able to have access to the giant uh, library that I used to have. And, and so part of that is uh, the effort of Kumpi now is to try to find a way to build a um, internet that will be accessed by everyone. Um, we look at the mesh network Wi-Fi that people can go anywhere and connect uh, Wi-Fi everywhere. Um, this is a long way to go, but we are in the, um, we are in the process of, of testing this model um, in, in the vitamin air locations and the location where uh, there's not much internet. Uh, mesh network there, may, is, I, I would like to explain a bit more. Mesh network is to create a local internet network where local participants or local user can have access to those local storage uh, contents where they don't have to spend uh, data to spend money on data to, to get the internet from the upper link. So this way we can make internet more faster and uh, accessible by a lot, of, a lot more people. Um, with the Kumpi lab and the lessons, uh, the, the internet and the, the Kumpi, uh, we still see uh, one issue. Um, when we give the computer or any computer uh, to anyone, when I say we, it's not we, um, throughout the past, there's a lot of organization give computer to school, give computer to student, but students do not really learn very much because uh, giving something is not, it's not really um, the solutions. Uh, so we we go further than that by hiring graduated or uh, personally uh, computer enthusiast people uh, to join us as a facilitator or a, a computer educator, where they um, uh, go to school, go to work with the the student at the school uh, that we partner with and uh, help transfer the knowledge that we have at Kumpi and learn from the internet uh, to school teachers and uh, students that we partner. And hopefully the more lab we start, the more facilitator we can hire and send to the school, um, the more we could um, transfer the knowledge. And because uh, even school do not really have Wi-Fi for students. Um, we, we were asked by uh, some school teacher at some of our school partner to, pro to build a Wi-Fi network, mesh network still um, for those uh, uh, school that do not have internet inside the whole school, but only in the lab. But some labs still don't have internet. So we start with the lab with internet first. Um, with the Kumpi uh, One Lab One School, we look at um, a pilot for Kumpi Academy. Uh, the Kumpi Academy come with the teacher or facilitator. Um, so our facilitator uh, curated contents online, everything that already taught and created 
uh, publish it on YouTube and other internet platform. We we bring them and make them into a, a learning lesson plan platform, le lesson plan way, so that students can go and learn without distractions and follow uh, the topic all the way to the end. And uh, so far, we, we, we have partnered with um, 10, 11 schools or so. Um, by uh, the end of this year, we hope, but be because of COVID, well, our plan has changed a little bit. Um, we want to partner with around 20 to 30 student, uh, teachers, schools, both private, NGO-based, or public school, um, and hope to, to bring about 100,000 students up to use this uh, lab, because each school has about 1,000 to 3,000, some school has 7,000 students. Um, we hope that those students have access to use the, the computer with the open source software base. And, and this is more about how we build the, the, the lab more than just build the hardware. Um, build a lab that provides resources to those, um, to those who may not heard or may not, may not be able to use this kind of software before, um, to use this software. Um, and so Kumpi is more than just a product, uh, more than just a laptop. It's, it's more about transferring knowledge and stand on the mission where we build a um, technology as a tool and provide other resources and network to uh, more people so that some of the young people now could become the next generation an innovator. They solve different problem. Maybe some of them will be the one who will take us to the moon or some of them who will be the one who uh, find the new vaccination for the next pandemic. We never know when the pandemic start again, the new pandemic start again, but if we can allow our next generation to learn based on their curiosity, um, they would be someone that we uh, become to become to be someone that we never thought they could be. Um, this is Kumpi and uh, the side project that take about 20% of my time, 20, 25% of my time is the uh, vitamin air. Um, it doesn't matter how much technology we want. Uh, if the world is ending, if the um, if the uh, global warming is hitting us uh, a lot, then um, the technology we build, the prosper uh, um, progress we create, will not be sustained. It will be destroyed by a nat natural disaster. Uh, part of the contribution there is to uh, start this reforestation and uh, alternative. Uh, natural farming. There's a lot of farming uh, going on in the world, um, but but not very sustainable practice. And we want to see if if we could do, for example, at vitamin air, we have 110 hectare. 80 percent of that would be reforestation. Um, 15 percent will be uh, practice natural farming, uh, some farming uh, activity that hopefully to create enough enough uh, uh, yield to uh, provide. Uh, to the needs of the people if as if we we farm for 100 hectare and then because of that uh, natural resources we see we could uh, integrate into uh, ecotourism so that it educate more people to do so to to learn and then maybe do do one of their own uh, replicate elsewhere and um, this uh, in order to do the reforestation more uh, effectively we hope uh, to use some technology to uh, influence, for example, seed bomb. There's there can be a drone that uh, fly over the surface of the soil where there's less forest, and then drop the seed, uh, explode, and then uh, give the seed to everywhere, uh, and then the they could just grow on its own naturally. But we have to help uh, this because wherever the forest has cut, um, uh, mass massively cut. Uh, the lands seem to be drier than the forest that has the the forest. So uh, we we learn from the Israeli technology where they have a device that capture uh, water molecule from thin air and make into a, a water drinkable. We thought we could capture this water and then um, water the field or where the forest is being reforest. Uh, this way. Um, we do not have to use too much uh, too much energy or power to uh, reforest bigger 
plant, bitter land. So these are the, the way we see and we use uh, blockchain based technology to tokenize uh, natural resources so that more people can participate and see uh, the benefits, join the benefits. Uh, and in the future, we hope to participate in uh, carbon trading uh, CO2 program. I don't know how this technology or this industry is count, um, but this day, uh, not much popularity in this CO2 program, but in the future, I think the CO2 um, about neutral program will, will be very, um, very popular. And we, we do not do this for the money sakes, but um, if we could inspire people from cutting tree to make money, to plant trees to make money and generate income, then this is going to be a very successful for um, human in general, for, for the whole human race in general. And uh, because uh, we want people to, to understand technology and understand about the universe and go to space, there are so much going on in space that we could, we could live the earth for what it is so that human can live and then mine everything up in space for what we need. That would be the success for the whole human race in general. And um, with that, I would like to finish my slide from here. And uh, I will take the, the questions. Viti, thank you so much. Uh, this is really interesting. Uh, perhaps instead of just calling you one of the top technopreneurs in the kingdom of Cambodia, uh, we can also consider you as a technical social entrepreneur in the kingdom of Cambodia. Uh, I realized that several things came up to uh, me during your presentation. Uh, not only are you looking at uh, providing the necessary digital tools to build an inclusive, digitally savvy workforce for Cambodia and beyond, you also work on smart agriculture using the latest agricultural digital technologies. And you are also tempering into blockchain as well as free software pro computer programming. Uh, I, I thought all these things are actually very relevant uh, for countries uh, within the APO region, and which is why it is an inspiration to get you to come over to talk at the APO Productivity Talk. So uh, allow me right now to ask you a few questions from the floor. Uh, there are some viewers uh, who know you and they have actually sent their regards to you. And uh, I have a question right now. I think this question is actually from Mr. Eddie Lee. Mr. Eddie Lee is from Singapore and uh, he asks, if your Kumpi laptop is running on Linux, uh, I assume that students can still have similar access to perhaps Microsoft Word and Excel via Google Word and Sheet. Do you have any thoughts uh, with regards to the Wi-Fi connectivity when it comes to using Kumpi laptops? Is there any uh, views from you? Um, so, Linux is on, it's not only it's not only for online. When people see Linux, um, uh, heard about Linux, they may thought about Google Chrome, and Google Chrome is not obviously complete Linux. Google Chrome based on Linux, uh, but it's Google product. All you use Google Chrome. I'm not I'm not fighting Google Chrome. We use a lot of Google product, but if you use Google Chrome or Chromebook. Um, yeah, not Google Chrome, sorry, Chromebook, um, then most of the thing you access is, is a Google product. So then it requires internet all the time in order to access to the um, device or document you use. Um, but lately, Chromebook has turned to more offline, so uh, Langnet is not very different from there. Um, what we use, which is called uh, Kumpi OS, uh, Kumpi OS is derived from the, the Linux and then customize the desktop based on Q, uh, KDE and the toolkits of QT. This allowed uh, to, to make the desktop very friendly to use for a lot of people that are willing to shift and try out for about a week or two in order to understand mm -hmm. what is the difference. Um, but in terms of like Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel, there are alternatives like LibreOffice. Um, Lately, we've been working with a school um, in Phnom Penh. Um, they are now looking to change from the current uh, platform, which is window-based, uh, license-based, to open source space. And their teacher was so scared first. And, and yesterday, I called with the principal. He said, one of the teacher requests to use um, Kumpi uh, because LibreOffice for math uh, type is very convenient. So I see. 
um, student will have access to the offline uh, alternative uh, to Microsoft Office Suite and other design, let's say uh, Adobe, there are some uh, applications like GIMP. So many applications on the open source now, almost be, be, beside the um, beside the user interface that is not too slick like the, the Microsoft, they have a very much, pretty much similar in, in many ways. Mm -hmm. And, and, and what we want the user to do is that to be independent, uh, to know that what they have is a tool. It's like a knife. You can kill people or you can cut fruits. Um, the computer they have and the right. software they have inside is, is for them to use for whatever they want to, to, to accomplish. They do not need to have a computer like uh, a Microsoft Office in order to do office work. They, they can have any other office work, office suite, to do the office work, as long as they have enough curiosity, enough flexibility, and enough um, drive to learn something a bit newer. So yeah, obviously, you, they do not need yeah. to have access to those Microsoft things. But yeah. if they want to, they can install Microsoft Word on Compi, just no license. Yes. Uh, so right now, we are operating on this Linux-based uh, operating system. It's called Krama OS, right? Yeah, because uh, I was looking at your specifications and Krama OS is based out of Linux operating system and it's still mm -hmm. very versatile, as versatile as any other Linux software. Yeah. So uh, we, the next we rename, thing it, we rename it to Compi OS. We rename it to Compi OS so, so that it's easier for people that is not in Cambodia to know, like Compi and the OS that run on Compi is Compi OS. Uh, that is easier. So okay. we found that after a year. <laughs> I see. Yeah, I have another private question right now, uh, and it relates back to agriculture. Um, we understand that uh, a lot of youth, they can still work in the farms in countries with very rich agricultural resources. And one such agricultural resource rich country would include the Kingdom of Cambodia. So some people may ask, so why do we still need to learn about digital technologies and computer programming? So what are your views? Since the youth, they can still work in the farms to eke out a living. So why is there a need for them to learn about software and computer programming and to upgrade themselves when there are so much agricultural resources available? A, a lot of the world, uh, we cannot actually live without stuff that come out of the farm, like um, either farm meat or farm fruit or farm vegetables. So we can't always live. We, we, we cannot escape right. the farm. Um, but the farm we have been, we have been doing in the last, uh, hundred years, especially in the last, uh, 20, 30 years is not sustainable. We use too much chemical. We use to, we don't, we don't really educate, uh, educate our farmer to do uh, a more productive way. Uh, to get more yield, but less uh, harm to the earth, number one, and less harm to the people who consume it. Um, with the technology and the know-how and the, 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 the young people that have the ability to do um, more creative farming, more, productiv more productivity uh, with farming, then uh, we will never be able to feed the people the way we feed before. Now, the population will exceed 9 billion, 10 billion people in 19, uh, in 2050. Uh, yeah. So if we farm the way we farm, we will never be feeding enough. And there'll be a lot of people go in hunger. But um, saying that, I think uh, because of greed, then we cannot feed enough people. Uh, if we have more, more, uh, we, if we could complete our needs more, then we could share more to other people. Um, to give you a specific answer to this is that the farm in the world, as well as Cambodia, will not be the farm before. Before we have 100 people, 100 family, there will be 100 farm, small farm. But soon into the future, it, we already learn in, in the West and in the developed world, um, technology take uh, make farm more effectively with less people. And so the leftover people that do not work on a farm can do other things that creative can do other thing that more while you create while you add it to the society so i believe that farm is still a, a relevant thing for uh, human consumptions and human progress but we need to not look at the farm the way we have 
done in the last 100 years and especially in the last 30 years and allow more kid, more young people to uh, encourage them to use technology and gain traction, gain thing, uh, gain uh, productivity through technology and do things more than just the farm that we used to farm. Yeah, thank you so much, Riti Bro. Uh, I have another very good question, uh, this time from Sri Lanka. Um, from Sri Lanka, Mr. Tanup Shah was asking, um, I think Kumpi is an excellent benchmark for social technopreneurs. Once you start it, may I ask what is the most challenging aspect? Is it really the money, the infrastructure, or the mindset of the people? So how did you overcome such obstacles? I think this is a very good question so that we can also learn from you. Well, we, did, we do not really overcome this obstacle yet. Um, and the, the, the two biggest obstacles uh, for now is the mindset. People, people, don't really, uh, people don't have much flexibility, especially the, those who already have used. For example, uh, we, I'm not talking about how bad Microsoft is. Microsoft is very good. Um, because of Microsoft, we have a lot of things that we do today. Um, uh, Apple is very good. They started so good. Um, the vision is so good that everyone should have one computer. Right now, we have one computer, which is smartphone. Every smartphone is a computer itself. But uh, a lot of the time, people who use the inter use the com this this computer, the smartphone, they only consume information, which not when you consume, you are not productive. So this is mm -hmm. one thing that is very important. A lot of kids have access to, to, to smartphone. They can consume and they can input a little bit of their knowledge. They can learn a lot, but they cannot be very productive in there. So um, to, to overcome this, actually we have to, uh, our, our strategy has been um, find the first 1000 Kumpi lover. <laughs> and support them and change and, and, and actually see see the process of how they change. Uh, some people uh, bought Kumpi um, because they want to support uh, our product. And we say, no, don't buy Kumpi because you want to support. Buy Kumpi if you can think of where you can use it um, uh, productively and, and useful for your life. And this is our yeah. message for, the, for, the, for our user. Um, because otherwise they can go and buy things from buy buy from the computer maker. There are a lot of uh, computer out there, but what we provide is the freedom uh, based uh, with the computer, with the, the open source software. And one more thing that is very difficult to challenge is the 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 use. Yeah. They got used to, for example, since they start using computer, if they are twenty let's say 25 years old they use computer and at 18 years old then they have used right. computer for five seven years these seven years yeah. they've been using microsoft based pro proprietary based uh, computer but then when they talk about computer they say ah oh, computer is difficult uh, compete is very difficult to, to use uh, because it's not the same as microsoft and uh, this and that this and that and and we we thought like they've been using this computer for about let's say um six, seven years, they, they don't even start to use Kumpi for seven days and they compare to their experience for seven years. This is the thing that we very find it very difficult to challenge um, is that people do not really give themselves a chance to try something really new. Um, we don't say we don't say that what we do is very, very good. Uh, we just say that this is another option for you. Uh, we're not uh, open source based and we committed to not lock anyone into the, the system. So. So um, people don't really offer themselves enough chance to try something new. And this is the biggest challenge we, we need to overcome. But mm. because our target audience, target user, those users are uh, young people, like 10 years old to 15, 17 years old, those are the majority of users. Um, we don't really uh, invest too much time now. In the first year, we invest so much time in changing people's mindset. But I said, like, okay, we do not need to convert people from using Windows or a Mac to use Compi. No, no such, no such effort will be giving anyone good benefits. Um, no Compi will have good benefit. No user will get ben good benefit because they have what they want to do. We need to just focus on the user that will use Compi more effectively, which is the young people. Um, yesterday, uh, this nine-year-old boy, he just got to use Compi 
right there, no asking for anything. His dad and his mom didn't know what to ask. He said, what, whatever you want to learn is in there. Uh, typing, uh, coding, um, learning from every website. Some website, those not available on, on Linux yet, on especially on Kupi yet, but we are binding those applications one by one, um, put on our app store. Um, eventually, I think in six months, we, we will have our own um, more friendly user user interface um, app store so that every user can just install the app there. Awesome, awesome. Um, right now, I have some a string of very interesting questions, and I will try to synthesize and crystallize your questions into one combined question. So uh, if you are ready, uh, Riti, uh, let, let me allow you to get a chance to answer this combined question. And one is from Malaysia, from Dr. Go Chi Xiong. The other one is from Singapore, Dr. Colin Gan. And the third one is from the Republic of Korea, Mr. Daniel Kim. And um, right now, Dr. Go Chi Xiong is asking, all the digital social innovations that you have come up with to improve and to build a digitally inclusive workforce, such as Kumpi Wi-Fi, free Kumpi laptop for every student, and Kumpi for young adults at a cheap price of 369 US dollars and even lower, is good. But how do you disseminate and promote this initiative as far as possible so that all the young adults and the youth, they can get together to constitute a strong digital workforce for Cambodia? And Dr. Colin Gunn from Singapore also has a similar question. You have a very wonderful effort that we want to replicate. How can we replicate this digital social innovations across the entire ASEAN region? Uh, for those readers uh, who are not sure what is ASEAN, ASEAN stands for Association of Southeast Asian Nations, of which Cambodia is one of them. So how can we replicate these uh, concepts that you have across the entire ASEAN region so that we can nurture digital technology talents for the future? And Mr. Daniel Kim uh, would like to also ask how you can address the digital divide in Cambodia. Because uh, in Cambodia, there are some less privileged communities, their internet connection is really poor. And perhaps they don't even have the wherewithal and the money to buy even the cheapest Kumpi laptop, even if it's 250 US dollars only. So Dr. Go is asking how we can promote all your social digital innovations ideas as far as possible to build a strong digital workforce. Dr. Golin Gan was asking how can we replicate this across the entire ASEAN region so that we can build this digital workforce. And Mr. Daniel Kim is asking how can we address the inherent digital divide in Cambodia? So the floor is yours. There's a lot of questions. Um, let me go one by one. Um, uh, so, so Kumpi started with this device that uh, sell at uh, 350, 360 dollar. Uh, this is not the device. I'm very proud to say it's affordable by everyone. Um, obviously, we had to start somewhere. But at the moment, what we're focusing on, since we learned from this problem that we passed in the last uh, year and a half, is that our goal is the young people that will be the one who determine the future that we will live in. Right. Um, right. So, so they are the one who who we want to have access to this computer. I mean, when I say this computer, it's a computer that that run solely on uh, Linux and Linux based uh, operating systems or software, uh, free software. Um, yeah. And this this um, idea give us. This, this effort, this uh, mission give us a, a glance on where where they are at. Um, let's say $360 is not cheap for a lot of people. Even the middle class people, it's, they, they still come, come uh, they still think about uh, which one which one they, they, they want to use. Uh, either the current market uh, user, uh, current market computer or, or compete. Uh, we don't want this to be compared. We want the computer to be right at their hand when they want it. Uh, when they need the computer to use. So, but this is very costly. Uh, nobody has found us to do this kind of thing yet. We, um, we want uh, to make, at the moment we are making a 4G uh, laptop, 4G notebook um, that, that is 11 inch, a uh, size of a tablet with a keyboard. Um, uh, mm. Basically it's a, it, we don't have. We are about to launch this this website with the product um, 
I think if you want to see it in two weeks, uh, go to compi.com, you'll see this new device. Um, but this is not a 4G yet um, because we still based on Intel. But at the moment, uh, team is is working on a uh, redesign of a board, PCB a board um, to use uh, ARM-based technology like a tablet and smartphone um, where we can add 4G modules so they can add SIM card and receive internet. Um, I will come to the internet later. Um, so this uh, laptop will have 4G and access to internet freely anywhere they want, like a smart like a smartphone, and has a call functionality too. Um, and because it is a, a low power CPU, um, the battery is equal, equal to the laptop. Then we could expand the battery life from like eight hours to maybe 20, 30 hours. This will be uh, giving more uh, accessibility to people who are outside of the uh, electricity that they need. Maybe oh. Basically, those who live in a rural area that do not have uh, electric grid, uh, just have some solar, they can charge and then use for 30, 30 hours. 30 hours is about three days of, of use. Um, so one charge lasts for three days. One more thing we are working on is the um, case, Gumpi case, where the case is covered by solar cell. Uh, the so solar cell, cell itself will be charging the computer whenever they put on the, in the sun um, and come right. with a small power bank. So this is the thing we're trying to address. We, we, have, we are not there yet, uh, but we are building it um, little by little. Hopefully within three to six months, we have different uh, alternative for uh, user. When it comes to internet, um, this is a big challenge for everyone everywhere. Um, what we try to do is to bring an uplink internet from 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 the city or load nearby city, nearby town to a village, and then build a mesh network device where they can share internet locally, and then only internet that they need that not store locally will have to go out through an uplink to get um, data. Um, um, so that because if you only focus on the on the learning, then we can store let's say ten terabit ten terabit of data that most people who use in that area can can just use. So this is our solution for now. We have not yet implemented in real in real life yet. Uh, but at Whitman Air Village, we have eighty family, and we we are in the process of of um, testing this. I, I think within the six months, we would love to include uh, this uh, network into our village, the village, uh, and allow um, people in the village to access the internet. This will answer to the digital divide in Cambodia mm -hmm. and most part of the world that has this problem. How we could replicate Kumpi to uh, ASEAN? Um, obviously, we, we look our Kumpi has a long-term goal, and our, our global um, goal is it's not just Cambodia, obviously, Asia, um, Southeast Asia, um, South Asia, and Africa. Those are the, the location where we had lots of young people, like in Cambodia, are the majority of the population of the country. So uh, we would like those young people to have access to this to this uh, device. But we do not we do not really um, we do not really one computer just be everywhere uh, if any partner any computing uh, computer maker in those region or in those area yeah. to work with yeah. be expand or have the same mission like us we would love to yeah. to know and, and work together or somehow support either through technical support uh, software and and some other some other um, te technology know-how support or we can learn from them even um, to, to expand and, and speed up this uh, development faster. Um, one important uh, note here is that we're trying to make this computer that I, that I just described up from, uh, 4G laptop at around $120 mm. below, um, with four gigabyte of RAM and 128 gigabyte of storage. Yeah. yeah, but 11 yeah. inch, uh, different, different, um, CPU type. Intel is very expensive, and we do not want to do that. Um, we do not want our user to to pay uh, so much because we cannot make it uh, cheaper, a uh, lower cost uh, because of Intel. 
So that's what we are trying to do. Yeah, um, sorry to cut you off a bit. I was just wondering, is there any potential collaborations that you are now having with other similar companies to expand your ideas across ASEAN and also to Africa? So could you like share a little bit more according to the question from Dr. Go Chi Xiong and Dr. Colin Gan? Uh, any potential collaboration within ASEAN and how do you do that? And I understand that you have also expanded into Africa. So could you share with our viewers some strategies that you do that to expand your ideas, your good digital social innovations to beyond Cambodia? Yeah, um, so we did not expand to Africa yet. Um, uh, uh, we wish, uh, but we're we still too small. So we are exploring this, this partnership with one of the company, education company in Africa that look for a uh, tablet or 4G tablets um, with a customizable software. We are still in a very early state uh, discussion. Um, this is in Nigeria. And uh, so far in Cambodia, in, in Southeast Asia, we only discussed with um, a friend of a friend that uh, run um, uh, education, uh, basically IT education in, in Myanmar, uh, but we had not pursued this yet. Um, because uh, any partnership uh, pursued, we have to uh, invest a lot of our efforts, um, uh, regardless, like talking money will be one of them, but the time and our team is very limited at the moment. So what we're trying to do now is to expand the team capacity um, uh, and, and the uh, productivity in Cambodia and then find partner in the other region to those who, who would love to um, uh, join hand and maybe build a build a ecosystem or build a, a hardware with us to bring to their community. Uh, we we cannot go to every community. Uh, we would love to have a uh, like a partner locally to address. Mm. Obviously, we can always remote uh, remotely support from Cambodia, and we can always send our team there. Like when we talk about Africa, we, we talk about we need to send like five of our team to go and train African uh, partner in order to, to, to get going. And we also need to um, secure the uh, transition when we, uh, after service, because Kumpi has this um, policy or our, our motto is that when they buy Kumpi, they have the, the device has to work. And if it's not work, we replace a new one. Quality assurance is our is our it's the thing we do. Um, obviously, yes. with time limited. Yes, you are right. Yeah, since we are talking about no use left behind, I, I want to put my focus and crystallize our thoughts on how we can actually ensure no youth, no child, no women will be left behind in this post-pandemic digital economy. So I understand that you are also the founder of Tech Talks, Tech Talks in Cambodia. So you founded something called Kima Talks. And this Kima Talks has been a very successful thing and impacted the young and the startup community in Cambodia. So uh, can you advise us and share with us how through Kima Talks, you motivate the young people towards innovation and startups? And how do you encourage them not to just be happy with traditional jobs, but to gravitate towards high value add digital jobs that can reap them higher value add and higher incomes and therefore secure their livelihoods and their future? Well, Kuma Talk is the uh, extension of TED Talks. Uh, so about in 2010, um, I wanted to have something like TED Talk in Cambodia, um, but uh, TED Talk only allowed uh, uh, English speaking. Um, so right. the, limit, the limit, uh, limitation there is that those who do not know English do not know, cannot access the knowledge. Um, the yeah. process the process of learning for every human is that we download the, the information either through listening, watching, and um, uh, interacting um, to our brain and process it. Um, but if you do not understand anything, we can only see. And then if we only see, then there's not much knowledge to process. So Khmer Talks uh, started that way. And uh, Khmer Talk aimed to build the uh, obviously, I'm not very uh, active in there anymore in the last two, three years because of the Kumpi um, work and small work. I see. Um, I but see. The, the, the visions of my talk is now shift uh, the work uh, 
um, into mm. Kumpi Academy. Kumpi Academy is 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 um, taking part of the Khmer Talk uh, initiative to put into its own work where um, uh, building the knowledge bank so that uh, well, the knowledge uh, pool so that anyone that want to learn um, can go and learn from people that share their idea share what they learn online and so um, they could they don't have to wait to go to school they can just go and they have if they have access to the internet they could just process these informations on their own um, and then learn through that um, this hopefully contribute to the learning process, the upgrade of their skill, and uh, open up their eyes so that they could um, maybe find a different uh, path to their value-added career. Um, it's so uh, a lot longer to go though. The road is very far, so we don't know how how long we will take to uh, yeah. offer the opportunity for mass audience. Um, but through through, through um, the uh, one one computer. Uh, one notebook, one student's um, um, initiative, we hope that by the time we could lower down um, our smaller laptop, smaller, smaller notebook um, to about $100, then most, most people should be able to have access to this computer uh, with internet connections. Um, therefore, everything that collected online um, that is valuable to learn should be able to uh, consume or learn and contribute back by those who have this uh, device. Um, then uh, we would have more people uh, uh, that that could that could absorb the knowledge and also contribute back what they, what they learn. Yes, that's great. That's great. Yeah, thank you so much um, uh, for the wonderful insights. Um, because through your sharing our member countries and our viewers have the chance to know what are some of the strategies that business leaders can do and to work hand in hand with the governments of the day in order to build up the digital capabilities of our young and youth population. Uh, we have actually now come towards the end of the APO productivity talk, but I also have uh, two more questions from uh, San Francisco as well as uh, San Diego, California. Uh, I will leave it offline and uh, I will continue to stay in touch with you, Brother Riti, and we can answer the questions of these two uh, American viewers later on offline. So uh, before we end our APO productivity talk, uh, I wish to give the honor of uh, my dear brother, whom I've actually known for four years uh, through uh, our past work connections, uh, Mr. Turiti, to say a final few words on how and what is the, your prospect for the future of the digital workforce in Cambodia and beyond? Any final words, Riti? Well, um, I would just um, wish that more people understand that uh, the power of open source is uh, enormous. Um, to, to give a very short brief is that everything we touch almost, even the whole internet infrastructure is run on Linux and uh, we just uh, we hope that more and more people see this power and um, in educate their kids or let their kids uh, or their their young generation to to get access to this open source um, as soon as they can, so that um, they could contribute back to to or learn uh, at least to uh, about the power of this open source and contribute back to the development of the human progress in in general. And um, in terms of developing this digital workforce um, in Cambodia, we, we hope that um, in the next two years uh, to three years, we could um, expand the reach of uh, Kumpi OS and the Kumpi's device, one, one uh, notebook, one uh, student, uh, to about 100 to 200,000 students so that we have enough people that in, in the next three years or five years have uh, become some sort of uh, an engineer, uh, either they are social engineer or um, um, mechanical engineer or software engineer so that they can help us solve more problem and build better software. What we are doing now at Kumpi is all self-taught. Um, anything we want to build, we have to learn through YouTube. We have to learn through research and build it. And uh, this way take a lot of, a lot of time. But through our learning, through our experience, we could then help share 
shape the way people uh, learn so it save more time and more young people can have access to a, a more um, guided um, learning but still self-directed uh, education so this way um, if we leave the the path for our young generation to choose and be flexible mm. for them to to decide and just guide them mm. through some door and we don't have to walk through the door they have to walk through the door but most of the time the way right. we educate our kids is that we we hold their hand walk through the door with them whether they like to go through the door this door or not um mm. we we have to think as a, a whole uh, human progress and the whole um education and learning experience is about going mm. to um the enlight uh, our head uh, enlight our, our mind mm. um it's yes. not a, a, not every uh, human learn the same way so we only need to show the door and they walk to the to through the door themselves if they want to and if it's wrong they have to learn from that mistake and then go another one so uh, a philosophy that that steve job mentioned once was that uh, yes. religion religions is like uh um religion is like uh different temple different gate to the same temple education is the same um the the goal of education is to enlighten the mind um in mm. increase productivity and uh, of, of of one's uh, experience um so mm. either way we either way they learn is up to them we just need to show them how to go into that and kumpi is, is trying to be the door and the guide and not to be the mm. temple they have to create mm. their own temple. and we hope that more people see um, this learning process this way and so we do not intervene our next generation learning experience so that it become more of a create creativity of their own not not because uh, we tell them to exactly. do so okay. Uh, as a matter of fact, your laptop, Kumpi, is actually the Khmer language for book of knowledge. So we are very happy that you are willing to share this book of knowledge from generations to generations. We have come to the end of the APO Productivity Talk. So SMEs and people and the youth remains our top priority. That principle has always guided us over the last 60 years, including this shift to digital learning platforms as well as our productivity talks. The APO will continue to host more productivity talks featuring different resource persons and guest speakers and with the aim of building economic resilience and business continuity. So continue to join us in our future APO productivity talks and top talks where we include and feature world leading experts and industry leaders such as Riti to speak on topics that address the social economic prosperity, inclusiveness and productivity in the APO region. So goodbye, Riti. Until the next time we see you again, stay safe. Thank and you. Goodbye, Thank you. Continue goodbye. to watch our APO productivity talks. Thank you. Bye-bye.